10 Facts About the British Crown Jewels You Didn't Know If you watch the video The Crown, you'll know that Queen Elizabeth frequently wears a real crown. Wears one for the state opening of Parliament every year. Other crowns, however, are rarely seen unless you are old enough to recall her coronation in 1953. The Queen possesses several crowns. She actually has quite a few. They are, however, only a minor part of the crown jewel's precious collection of diamonds, gold, and silver. Each one has an interesting, amazing, and sometimes hilarious past. Hi there, welcome to Topics World. Please give your suggestions in the comment section. Number 10 St. Edward's Crown St. Edward's Crown is the most important component of the crown jewels. It is constructed of pure gold and was fashioned specifically for King Charles II's coronation in 1661. The old crown, which had been used since the time of Edward the Confessor, was melted down in 1649 when the monarchy was overthrown and England became a republic for a short time. The restoration brought with it a new throne. Although the crown is now set with valuable stones, it was not originally. Until 1911, every coronation required the rental of costly stones. After the ceremony, they were taken from the crown and returned to their owners. The St. Edward's crown is only worn during the coronation ritual, when it is put on the monarch's head. As a result, Queen Elizabeth II has only worn it once. She's probably relieved that she's only using it rarely because it's so hefty. Only the king, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and the crown jeweler are entitled to handle St. Edward's crown. During Queen Elizabeth II's coronation in 1953, the archbishop sewed a bit of gold thread to the gold frame of the crown so he could distinguish between the front and rear of the crown. Unfortunately, the thread was pulled forward to the event, leaving the archbishop with only the hope that everything went according to plan. Number 9 Imperial State Crown The Imperial State Crown which the Queen wears every year at the state opening of Parliament, is far more often used. Queen Elizabeth II also wore it when she left Westminster Abbey after being crowned Queen. It was created in 1937 for King George VI and is an exact replica of the one Queen Victoria possessed. Its gems were repurposed from the George I state crown, the imperial state crown was last modified for Queen Elizabeth II to fit the varying head shapes of various monarchs. The crown is made of gold, silver, and platinum, and it has 2,868 diamonds, 17 sapphires, 11 emeralds, 269 pearls, and 4 rubies. The Cullinan 2 diamond, 317 carats, popularly known as the second star of Africa, is the crown's greatest jewel. It is the second biggest stone cut from the renowned Cullinan diamond, the largest ever mined. Ashers of Amsterdam cut the 3,106 carat stone. As we'll see later, the biggest stone from the second suite of diamonds also made its way into the crown jewels. The second largest jewel in the crown is the Black Prince's ruby, which is supposed to have been worn as a pendant and pierced during the medieval period. The ruby was also worn by Henry V at the Battle of Agincourt. The crown also comprises four pear-shaped pearls that Queen Elizabeth I wore as earrings. Catherine de' Medici allegedly gave them to her daughter-in-law, Mary. Queen of Scots, but the Virgin Queen likely got them after ordering Mary's execution. Number 8. Consort Crowns 
Other members of the royal family have donned ceremonial hats as well. At the coronations of their husbands' kings, queen consorts have worn crowns or circlets since the 14th century. In 1685, Mary of Medina, James II's wife, got her specially commissioned diadem the day before the wedding. It was adorned with 177 diamonds, which were only on loan and had to be removed afterwards, like the other crown jewels. They were afterwards replaced by quartz crystal. Various female members of the royal family wore the diadem. The famous Kohinoor diamond was set on the front cross. This diamond has previously been seen in the crowns of Queens Mary and Alexandra. Sultan Abdul Medoid also gave Queen Victoria the big diamond at the front of the crown's band as a thank you for British military help during the Crimean War. It wasn't until 1937 when Queen Elizabeth, wife of King George VI and mother of the current monarch, commissioned a new crown for her husband's coronation. It is set in a platinum frame and has 2,800 diamonds. Number 7 Ampulla and Coronation Spoon The gold ampulla, constructed in 1661, replaced a smaller, comparable cup, now lost to history as it was burned down by Oliver Cromwell. The ampulla is shaped like an eagle with outspread wings. The head is removable, and the beak has a little aperture. It is most closely connected with the respectful and spiritual parts of the monarch's coronation since it contains the holy oil with which God anoints the king or queen. The oil is applied to the monarch's head, breast, and hands by the archbishop. Pour the oil onto the anointing spoon. It is the oldest piece in the crown jewel collection, made of silver gilt. When Cromwell declared a republic, the spoon, like the other crowns and regalia, was to be melted down. However, it was sold instead. Mr. Kindersley, a yeoman of Charles I's wardrobe, bought it for sixteen shillings, and it survived the republic's brief existence. In 1661, Kindersley returned the coronation spoon to King Charles II. This most somber moment of Queen Elizabeth II's coronation was not permitted to be captured by television cameras broadcasting the ceremony. A gold canopy was draped over the Queen for the sacred anointing. Number 6 Ring Since William Ivey's coronation in 1831, the sovereign's ring has been worn. Sapphires, rubies, and fourteen dazzling diamonds are set in the ring. For Queen Victoria's small fingers, a copy of the ring, which was made to look like the crosses of St. George and St. Andrew, had to be made. She wrote after her coronation, the archbishop had, very clumsily, put the ring on the incorrect finger, and the result was that I had the greatest trouble taking it off again, which I at last accomplished with tremendous agony. Number 5. The Sovereign's Orb The orb, an essentially religious emblem, represents the Christian world as a globe with a cross set on top. The orb is a hollow gold sphere fashioned for Charles II's coronation. It is studded with 375 pearls, 365 diamonds, 18 rubies, 9 emeralds, 9 sapphires, 1 amethyst, and one glass piece. It is held in the sovereign's right hand as a symbol of power during the coronation, when he is given the symbols of power, and in his left hand as he leaves Westminster Abbey. Number 4 Scepter and Rod The scepter and rod are additional decorative elements in the collection with obvious religious meaning. It is shaped like a shepherd's staff and represents the monarch's position as pastoral caretaker for his or her people. At William the Conqueror's coronation in 1066, the meaning of the crown jewels was explained this way, by the scepter, 
revolt throughout the realm is held back, and the rod gathers and binds men who wander. Interestingly, when King George V placed the Cullinan, I diamond, 530.2 carats, on the sovereign scepter with cross in 1910, a portion of the aforementioned Cullinan diamond, stones from which are included in the crowns, was also integrated. Number 3 Hidden Jewels It was recently revealed in a television show on the royal jewels that they were nearly lost forever when they were taken from the Tower of London. During World War II, when London was being bombed a lot and there was a very real chance that Germany would invade, King George VI ordered the most important symbols of the country to be smuggled out of the city and hidden somewhere safe so they wouldn't fall into the hands of the Nazis. The gems were hidden in a secret vault deep in the underbelly of Windsor Castle in a biscuit tin. The sole way inside the vault was through a mundane trapdoor on the floor of a subterranean passageway. Fortunately, the few people who knew where the diamonds were hidden survived the battle. After the ceremony, the royal jewels were restored to the Tower of London. Number 2 Tarnished Gold The royal jewels are often the focus of the most serious ceremonies in the UK but they have also been involved in some funny situations. The Duke of Argyll carried the imperial state crown on a cushion for Queen Victoria during a state opening of Parliament in the 19th century. However, the crown fell to the ground with a huge bang. The Queen, not amused, subsequently wrote in her diary that the crown was all crushed and mashed, looking like a pudding that had sat down. Similarly, the scepter slid off a table during James II's coronation dinner in 1685, dislodging two huge gems from within it. Fortunately, they were subsequently retrieved from the Westminster Hall floor. Number 1 Uneasy Lies the Head The program on the crown jewels had a bit of a scoop because it included an interview with Queen Elizabeth II. We called it a chat since it was not an interview. According to the program's host, historian Alastair Bruce, direct questions to the Queen are not permitted. So you must make a point, and then the Queen occasionally answers, and sometimes a dialogue ensues. This was a meeting with the Queen. Whatever it was, Her Majesty did not disappoint. Despite her admiration for the sparkling gems, the Queen observed that they were not particularly pleasant to wear. Because you can't read the speech while wearing the crown because you can't look down, you have to take the crown off. Because if you do, your neck will snap and fall off. So, there are some downsides to crowns, but overall, they're fairly significant things, she continued charmingly.